Well, good morning and welcome to Christchurch Key in Dorset. We're going to do something a bit different today and in fact over the next few videos. I've recently been talking to a friend of mine called Neil who's returning to motorcycling after a break of 37 years and he's been picking my brains on how he can polish his riding up a bit. He's produced a series of fascinating films on YouTube called Back to the Bike. It's a video diary of his journey back into motorcycling with a view to taking his Institute of Advanced Motorcycling test at the end of it. To help clarify some of the things that we've been discussing, I thought I'd do some demonstration rides. So here they are. So when we're ready, uh, make sure you stands up, a good look all around the bike. Ignition on, and for you Neil, we're going to do a little bit of slow riding out of here. So make sure the neutral light's on, clutch is in. And as soon as we're ready to go, good look all around the bike. Once I pull away, both feet are up, the back brakes just very gently on now, and we need to know, Neil, is that the bike needs to stay upright. Very, very smooth, small inputs, just a little bit of, a little bit more rev than normal, and like you said before, back brake, and then just the, the biting point of the clutch. If you have any problems with it, it's normally because you haven't got quite enough rev on, just a little bit more than you need, and that's the secret, is keep the bike moving. So as we come down to the T-junction, we're going to the left, it's a one-way system. So a quick look to the right, we're all clear. You'll see there's a fair bit of surface water left on the road. We've had some very heavy rain the last few days, and this is the first dry day we've had for ages, so I thought it'd be rude not to get the bike out. So straight back onto the dry line, it's uh, just dry the tyres out once you've been through the water, if we get the opportunity. As we come down to the end here, we're going to follow that black car around to the right. Check in the mirrors. I'm going to try not to say check in the mirrors too much on this. It's um, if we're talking advanced, and I think we can take that as red that we're doing that all the time. So just a mid lane position. There's a few pedestrians about. Nothing, any great shakes. I can see the concerners at the moment. And then when you get the new view, always look up and far into the distance as you can. If anything like that happens in front of you in your peripheral vision, you'll see it and you'll react to it. So mid lane, nice sunshine here from the right hand side, if anything comes from the right there, I'd get the shadow before I see the vehicle. So just keeping our speed fairly low, there's lots going on at the moment, so we don't want to tear our sim up through here. And we're going left at the top onto a small roundabout. So looking to the right, see if we can keep the vehicle moving. Yes we can, it's fairly quiet this morning. Just accelerate up. So not too close to the vehicle in front, don't worry about what other people think, give yourself plenty of room just in case anything happens behind you and you need to move so we can go straight out of here, there is a vehicle coming from the right but he's a fair way off. So as we pass the penultimate junction here, a signal to the left to leave, just keeping the bike under drive whilst it's banked over. Always looking as far into the distance as you can and then work back towards yourself. So I can see a little bit of traffic on the road. Everything seems to be moving quite nicely. Nobody at this pedestrian crossing. So unless anyone's done the matchstick trick, I'm not expecting these to change for me. I'm just going to move in now. We've got these several parked vehicles on the near side. There's no need to hold traffic there, there's plenty of room. I, I can feel quite happy just to move over and let the oncoming vehicles through. If it was a narrower road, I would move out and hold them. So if you come up to the blind brow, watch the vehicle going over, watch for uh, any braking. Might give us a clue if there's a queue the far side of the bridge. No one at this pedestrian crossing either. And we see this person walking around the back of the car on the near side here. Just watching my speed's creeping up. And I can see vehicles ahead of me pulling out for this parked vehicle on the pavement. We've got no following traffic at all. So I can just move out. And if there's nothing coming the other way, get right away from them. Why do we need to be anywhere near them? If anyone opens a door or a child or an animal runs out, we've got the best chance of stopping if we're a long way away from them. So we can see this blue car at the junction on the near side. And then we've got what looks like the dustman, I think, which is unusual. This is a Sunday. So the traffic lights are at red. So we'll just roll off from way back. Just a little bit of gentle braking required now. And now the lights to change. My feet are still up. My feet are still up. Just a gentle control on the back brake. My feet are still up. 
And then when we're ready, I can just release the back brake, slip the clutch out. I had the bike just under drive, clutch just on the bike point, and just controlling it with the back brake. Kneel. So, signal to leave. Nice dry road surface. The vehicle header is turning off, but into a protected lane. So, once they're out of the way, that's no bother to us. Looking ahead into the distance, and the road's clear, so we can go straight to 30. I can see a garage forecourt coming up. We have got following traffic now. It's a sensible distance behind me, so I'm certainly not concerned about them. Uh, a few dogs on the offside here, just watching them. They are all on leads, and just in case one of them legs it out into the road if they start fighting. The vehicle ahead with an indicator on, so we're just going to move out slightly, let them clear, and then just pick the drive up. You see we lost four miles an hour. Indicator on on the car ahead of us as well on this one, emerging from the garage forecourt. So well away from them and this vehicle in the next junction. Lady here approaching the pedestrian crossing. No, nope, she's just gone past it, so that's okay. And we've got this vehicle on the offside, so I'm just going to move away from the oncoming traffic a little bit until we're clear of that. And then I can just gently bring the bike back out towards about three quarters of the way across the lane, just between the centre and the crown. Nice commanding position. If you tuck rod up into the near side, you encourage people to overtake you, and they will do in the same lane as you. So we want to hold the road, be in control. Uh, I was discussing with Neil the other day that although if you come off a bike you're vulnerable, whilst you're riding it, you're not necessarily. So don't think vulnerable all the time. Uh, and the, the phrase I used to him was, think sheepdog and not flock. Take control of situations and, and make things happen for you. A little bit of oncoming traffic then, we've still got following traffic, it's the same vehicle, uh, Black Range Rover, but it's a long way back. Let's make sure our speed is something like it as we go through the speed camera. Don't want to be collecting points and prizes. So looking ahead then, we've got a couple of pedestrians on the near side and I can see what looks like another pedestrian crossing just before just, yeah, just one roundabout, I thought it was a double roundabout, so it's a single roundabout. You see the traffic ahead of us braking. No need for me to slow down at the moment, certainly no need to be braking. I can just gently roll off. I'm looking across to the right. I can't see anything moving at all except a vehicle coming out of the car park, so no need for me to stop. Quick signal to leave, just to clear up any ambiguities to where we're going. Remember, this is still a, a 30 limit, even though it's just whacking great wide road here. So we're going to hold the road, take that commanding position. And just up ahead of us we can see the, um, the GLFs. Watching the lady with a dog on the right hand side of the road here, make sure that it's the dog's under control. And as soon as we reach the signs... I was going to say accelerate up, and then I saw the 30 limit, so a little bit of gentle braking required. As we come down towards the traffic lights, so we've got a roadworks going on here. We want the left hand lane. Lights are green at the moment. If they're already green, there's that possibility they might change, so we're ready for that. We've got this Range Rover on behind, who again is at a safe distance, I'm not concerned about that. still in the 30 limit, I can just gently move the bike across just to avoid the potholes here. More like bore holes. Okay, so our lights are at green. So I'm just starting to accelerate up, ready in case they change, so not too much yet. Okay, once I'm happy. So into the near side, get a nice early view as you come in. Once the view's no good, out to the crown of the road. And I can hold that view. As long as nothing comes the other way, and if they do, I'll get the nice early view of them. And we're coming down to a right-hand bend, so I'm just going to draw a straight line to hit the near side verge-ish, just after this junction here. A little bit of gentle braking, I was a little bit enthusiastic there, just to make sure that we come in at 30 into the 30 limit. 30 limits and in town, some people will say um, you don't need to position, I, I disagree with that, we still want to position, you don't have to position quite so extremely, but position for safety, and keep yourself safe. So on the way down to the roundabout then, we are going to the right, 
looking across to the the one two o'clock position, nothing coming, so straight out into the roundabout. The signal to leave. A couple of horses up ahead were actually turning off before we reached them. But there are these three horses up just up the road there. Just a quick shoulder check as we make the left turn. Number 30 limit. I can straighten the bend out, which takes me nicely away from the oncoming traffic. Just pick our speed up. Get up somewhere near the 30 mark. There's a cyclist coming in the other way, and he's going to be coming over a brow, so anything car-wise may come to our side of the road if anything comes over there quick behind him. Alright, so power up. These cars ahead aren't at 60. They're now controlling my speed, so I should be looking to overtake. There are junctions along here. I'm looking off for the red car, this is looking good. Yep. And you'll notice I go nice and wide. Leave my gear change till after I'm alongside, but again, why be anywhere near him if it's um, got plenty of road there? Also, if anything's coming the other way when you're doing the overtake, they'll see the twin headlights of the bike, and sometimes that can panic people up a little bit. But if you do your overtake so you're out against it towards the offside hedge, what they'll actually see is you on the way back in, pretty much sideways on, and it'll set them down again. So cyclists are coming towards us. Looking ahead now, try and get a warning sign here for the series of bends. So the first bend is to the left, so I'm going to move out towards the crown of the road. We've got um, a little bit damp and patchy on the road surface here. Nothing, any great shakes to worry about though. If it's any wetter, this is literally just damp, but if it's any wetter, there's actually a dry line. Um, one of the things that Neil questioned me on was when the roads are really crappy and you've got these lines of gravel and old salt and everything else down there. Pretty much what you've learned goes out the window, put your computer into safe mode, and it's survival that you just go on the dry line everywhere, Neil, and um, cross that only when you have to. Make sure your speed's down and you're upright. Stay on the dry line, just coming up to the brow of the hill, I just lose position a little bit. Uh, the immediate thing that strikes me up here is that fluorescent jacket, there's a cyclist on our side of the road. A couple of oncoming vehicles, I'm just going to work out where I'm going to meet him. You can see the car there ahead of me just braking to let the cars come through. The cyclist turning off actually, it uh, might save us, yep, going to save us a job on that. So straight out to the crown of the road, bring our speed up to 40. I'm looking ahead, I can see a triangular warning sign telling me that there is a fairly severe right-hand bend, so I can just straighten the course just gently across this nice dry line in towards the near side. Just reduce my speed, I've lost a lot of view at the moment, it's pretty blind isn't it? And once I've got the view I can just pick the drive up, straighten the bend out. I want to be out here on the crown of the road now to get the nice early view into the next left-hander. Just straighten this little bit off. Draw a straight line from here. Pretty much right to the end of the straight. I can see we're coming down alongside the main road here. Uh, we don't join it. This road will either go over it or I can turn off, which I might. I should probably do that. Speed's creeping up again. So always be prepared, left hand bends, give up position for safety. We've got the, we can sit right out on the crown of the road and as soon as we've got the view, start aiming to the entry point for the next one. A little bit of damp where you'd expect to find it in some of the little hollows here watching the entrance to the leisure park here on the left, that's all closed, in towards the near side then just extend the view, I've got a nice open view anyway all down through the trees there but we can just get the very best of it there before straightening it out, coming back out towards the crown of the road. 
little patches of mud. But generally the roads aren't too bad actually. It's, I think with the heavy rain it's washed most of the salt and the rubbish off them. So losing position for safety, which we always do with these oncoming vehicles. And hopefully that's gone. We'll take it it was for here in this dip. So just start to straighten the bend out for the oncoming vehicle and the cyclist. And the triangular warning sign here tells you that there's a junction in the apex of the bend here. I'm going to take this little road, it's quite an interesting one. So just coming down through the gears, nice dry road surface, we need to bank the bike over a little bit to leave. And then I can just straighten the bends out. Prepared to give up pos uh, position for safety if anything comes the other way. And I can just straighten to the entry point to the next one. The road looks like it's bearing around to the left, so I can just start to bring the bike out towards the crown of the road. Nice early view, present the vehicle. Anything coming the other way sees me nice and early. And I can see it. So we've got these boards down here for floods, but I think most of it seems to have gone now. So looking ahead then, we've got this, there's a speed limit coming up. We're just going to roll off, this is another question that Neil asked me about, should I use a bit of brake light to warn traffic behind? If you just roll off over a couple of hundred yards like that, down to speed, uh, no need, I, it's not very often that you need to do it. I think probably more if you're actually coming to a stop and possibly in some of the lower speed limits if you're mooching around town and uh, you'll probably be on the brakes anyway, but personally, no, I don't flash brake lights at people. One of the reasons for that is if you touch the brakes, you're actually in danger of upsetting the, the balance of the bike. If you get that wrong and just put a little bit more on than you thought when, you've, when you touch the brakes, whether it's back or front or both, you could actually upset the balance of the bike, which is, particularly in wet weather, is not a very good thing. So, I could see, well, I think there was a cyclist and then there's a car on behind it. Either a cyclist or yeah, I think it's a cyclist. I was going to say either that or a horse rider, but I think it's a cyclist. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we're coming down to a, a roundabout on a main road. So we're just going to work out where we're likely to meet the cyclist. It's going to be pretty much just before the roundabout there somewhere. About 100 yards before the roundabout. It's not that going that fast particularly. just going to come out towards the crown. There's a, a protected central area there which is actually going to help me is if anything does come the other way, we're miles away from the thing anyway. Just watching in case the red car wants to use the central lane there to turn right. Okay, we're good. So we're going to be turning right, looking to see if I can keep the bike moving. And the answer is no. So Neil, the right foot is down, the bike's still in gear at the moment neutral, I'm holding it on the front brake. When I'm ready to go, I can just put the bike straight into gear and we're gone. So we don't have to do that changing leg, what they call the, the traffic light two-step. Okay, so out we go. Keep the bike under drive whilst we're banked over. Straight up to 50, and this is another one for you, Neil. You see that just going up through the gearbox now, just to take the load off the engine. We're only doing 50 mile an hour, there's top gear. Just taking the load off the engine. So as we come up to the water, the brow of the hill then, 
got the signs for the roundabout. We're going to be turning left, which is signposted for St Ives. Remember that old thing about slow in and quick out? Let's just take our time and just roll the speed off. No braking at the moment. Just watching the white vehicle in the garage fall for there and just pick up the drive a little bit, just looking at the roundabout. Grey cars coming across from my right. Black estate behind him could be following him, yeah, he's got an indicator on. There's a few little potholes in the road here. So from way back, we're weighing it all up, looking at everybody else's vehicle, and in your head, you're driving their vehicles and anticipating what they're going to do, where they're going to go, and at what time in comparison, comparison to where we are. So just nice and steady through the 30 limit, just come out a little bit and then just lose position for safety, that black car expecting him to come out, which he does watching the pedestrian there so we can just move back out of our way from him he's bought the beer anyway, good boy and we've got this little, uh, there's a dog here on the lead and somebody offloading stuff from a lorry so dog's on the, uh, on the lead under control, no problems no problems with the recovery truck just move out then for the parked vehicle nothing coming the other way at the moment in the red car in the junction, so this crown of the road positions already put us nicely away from anything like that happening. Some, some rubbish on the road here we want to avoid, uh, if we can, running over anything in the, on the road surface. Just nice and steady. The road's quite bumpy down through here, which I think a lot of it's tree roots under the road. So pedestrians on the near side, no dogs, no children. We're shortly coming down to a T-junction, we're going to be turning to the left. And for those of you who know the area, this is uh, where Three Cross Motorcycles is. We're a mile and a half up the road here, watching the dogs. Watching the junction on the near side, and just gently now, both brakes together. The indicator on, come down through the gearbox, into first, ready to go. It's only a give way, there's a lorry coming, so we'll give way to that one. Straight out afterwards, watching this vehicle in the junction here all the pedestrians that are around. Coming straight up to speed, 40 mile an hour speed limit down through here. Not getting too close to the lorry. You've got absolutely no view of anything except the horse logo. And you'll see as I drop off here, we can extend our view nice view now down both sides of the vehicle. Never had a clue that car was in front of it before we did that. Just take a higher gear to rush the engine. Here it's just getting busy. So you see that the road surface now, nice and dry, we've had damp and patchy and a bit of all sorts so far, but nice and dry up through here in the open ground. And for those of you that know the area, this is where Three Cross Motorcycles is, very nice people who deal in Triumphs, they're on Wolfsbridge Industrial Estate, which is just on the left around the corner here. We're going to be going straight on, I'm guessing they're probably here, must be shut today. 